A glowing silhouette of a vehicle moving silently through Savannah at dusk. No engine noise, no exhaust, just pure motion. You thought it was a fluke. You thought Africa's first self-powered car was a one-time phenomenon. You were wrong. Second self-powered car emerges from Africa. Automobile giants caught off guard. Again, another African automaker has done the unthinkable. Again, a self-charging car. No fuel. No plug. No grid. And this time, it's even more advanced. The Unveiling A private launch event held under open skies in Windhoek, Namibia. The new prototype sits under a black cover. Cameras click. Engineers nod. This isn't Maxwell. This isn't a copy. It's a new player, built in the shadows, forged from scraps, solar, and a belief that the future belongs to the fearless. The car is called the SIA-2, named after the Swahili word for breath. Because that's exactly what it does. It breathes energy from its environment. How it works. Animations break down the tech. Ultra-thin solar skin, motion energy capture, quantum resonant battery cell. The SIA-2 doesn't rely on plug-in stations. It converts heat, friction, even sound into power. It rethinks everything we've assumed about electric vehicles. Its drive system, powered by a layered energy matrix, developed entirely in Africa using locally sourced biomineral composites. A different kind of disruption. Western journalists try and understand the tech. Skeptical analysts at auto expos. African teenagers test driving it in the streets of Lusaka. The Western industry isn't just confused, it's afraid. Because this isn't just competition. It's a completely different paradigm. Where Europe talks about EV charging grids, Africa is making cars that don't need a grid at all. Executives in Munich and Detroit scrambling to analyze teardown data. But the SIA-2's AI disables unauthorized access. You can't reverse engineer what was never engineered like yours. Who built it? Rural garages in Zimbabwe. Young men and women soldering, coding, testing. The car wasn't built in a billion-dollar lab. It was assembled in workshops powered by sun and willpower. Designed by engineers trained not in Paris or Stanford, but in open-source forums, desert fields, and African polytechnics. Global market reaction. Major automakers' stock prices flash red. Emergency boardroom meetings. Supply chain delays in Asia. The impact is instant. Tesla's African division halts rollout. Volkswagen suspends its budget EV project for West Africa. Meanwhile, SIA, two sells out 10,000 units in 48 hours. All pre-orders. All from the continent. The industry didn't just get disrupted. It got blindsided again. The secret behind the silence. Close up of the car's digital brain. Not based on silicon, but shimmering neural substrate known only as Auralite. SI, two didn't use lithium in its battery, didn't use rare earths in its motor, didn't use imported cloud servers for its intelligence, because the team behind it discovered something else, something so simple and so revolutionary. Auralite, the tech they can't replicate, the shimmering core of the SIA-2's energy system pulses like a living cell. Engineers in lab coats monitor it. Not with keyboards, but with touch-responsive hollow gauges coded in an indigenous UI script. At the heart of the SIA, two lies Auralite, not a battery, but a living energy substrate. Designed from plant-based crystalline lattices found in the Rift Valley. Powered by light vibration and biological frequency alignment. European and Asian labs trying to replicate it. But failing, the material destabilizes outside tropical climates. The code refuses to run on Western hardware. It's not just new technology. It's place-based technology built to work with Africa, not against it. For the first time in auto history, the most advanced system on the planet won't run in the global north. The attempt to bury the breakthrough. Leaked documents. International lobbyists. Confidential memos from Western auto lobbies to African ministers. Within weeks of SIA-2's reveal... The backlash begins, not on the roads, but in boardrooms, banking institutions, and intelligence corridors. A secret closed-door meeting in Geneva. Representatives from oil firms, lithium suppliers, and EV conglomerates whisper around a table. What happens when a car doesn't need gas, doesn't need charging stations, 
doesn't need imports, and doesn't need you. They didn't plan to compete. They plan to contain. The global uproar. Protests erupt in South America and Southeast Asia. Crowds demanding access to SIA, too. Hashtags trend. Hashtag let Africa lead. Hashtag self-powered now. Across the global South, the SIA, too, became more than a car. It became a symbol of self-reliance, local ingenuity, and freedom from global monopolies. African nations, once treated as markets for scrap metal and second-hand sedans, now are what the world wanted and what power players couldn't control. An African tech bloc announces open licensing of the Oralite Protocol to partner nations only, excluding Western countries until tech reparations are negotiated. Africa wasn't just selling cars. It was negotiating history. Eyes in the sky. Satellite footage shows dozens of new manufacturing zones glowing across West, East, and Southern Africa. China, Russia, and South Korea quietly position new partnerships. The world began watching from above, monitoring trade routes, measuring every movement of the SIA to and its mysterious power source. But what they couldn't see was the one thing that made it unstoppable. The design is not the secret. The community is the invisible grid. Thousands of small oralite modules lighting homes, powering farms, running water purification in rural villages, all connected, forming a silent, invisible mesh. The real innovation was in the car. It was in the ecosystem behind it. Every SA2 that hit the road became a living node, part of the decentralized energy web that grew with every mile, a grid that couldn't be shut down because it was never centralized to begin with. The Sabotage Protocol, Darken Room in London, a digital operations task force called Project Eclipse is briefed. On screen, a 3D model of the Oralite mesh. What cannot be copied must be corrupted. Project Eclipse wasn't designed to win market share. It was designed to undermine trust. Slowly, invisibly, micro-malware introduced into imported African diagnostic tools. Cloud interference tech deployed. A rumor campaign spreads through targeted ads. Oralite may cause radiation poisoning. They couldn't stop the SIA, to, but they could make the world afraid of it. The collapse, that didn't happen. African engineers at a small station in Senegal run integrity checks. Anomalies detected. But instead of panic, a quiet confidence. You see, the Oralite mesh wasn't just built for performance. It was built for resilience. Every vehicle in the network constantly cross-checks others. Misinformation dies the second it enters the circuit. Self-healing protocols restabilize within seconds. Social media users in Uganda post proof videos debunking rumors. AI bots trace misinformation to foreign IPs and name them publicly. The sabotage attempt backfired. Trust didn't break. It deepened. A system that teaches itself. ASIA. Two drives itself through heavy rain in Mozambique making real-time decisions not just from sensors, but from learned patterns transmitted across the mesh. Unlike other cars, the SIA, too, isn't updated through cloud servers. It learns from the network of other cars. Every road driven, every storm survived, every terrain crossed, is broadcast across the system. An SIA, too, in Morocco, avoiding a sand trap, using terrain knowledge gathered from a unit in Botswana, 1,800 kilometers away. It doesn't just adapt. It remembers. And now, Africa's roads are teaching it more than any lab ever could. The call from the global south. Delegates from Brazil, India, Indonesia, and Egypt arrive at the Pan-African EV Summit in Addis Ababa. Banners read, Shared roads, shared future. The world's developing powers took notice. They weren't here to invest. They were here to learn. South America asked for gridless city designs. Asia wanted open access Oralite training. The Middle East? A transport link from Cairo to Accra using only Maxwell and SIA tech. An agreement signed. The Global South Mobility Pact. Rejecting fossil dominance. Rejecting imported tech dependency and accepting one clause. No system shall run unless it empowers those who build it. And still they deny... A European news anchor speaks over outdated footage, claiming African tech lacks scale. 
Meanwhile, behind her SIA, two fleets operate silently across four continents. They said it was lucky. Then they said it was a copy. Then they said it was a phase. Now they say nothing. Because while they doubt, Africa drives. The drive that changed the world. An SIA, two glide silently through the Rift Valley. No charging station. No fuel depot. Just the hum of energy harvested from its surroundings. It began as an experiment, then a statement, and now a movement. The SIA, too, was never just a vehicle. It was a rejection of dependency, a declaration of design, a reclamation of dignity. World leaders gathered at the UN Tech and Energy Summit. On the main stage, SIA, too, wrapped not in branding, but in hand-painted symbols from five African nations. For the first time, Africa was invited to the table. It built the table, and now the world listened. The legacy begins. Multiple scenes blend together. Children in Ghana assembling mini solar-powered carts modeled after the SIA-2. Latin American engineers replicating Oralite with Amazonian minerals. A self-powered EV crossing the strait of Gibraltar under its own energy.